Hello there, my name is Diana and I'm gonna talk today about how to start an architecture practice. Why would you do that? <laughs> um, what is the reward? What are the challenges? And um, is, it, is it really worth it? So the question is how to start an architecture practice. Um, because there is another question, why would you do that? My reasons were that um, I was not happy at all where I was. I um, struggled a lot. I was, to be honest, wanted to give up on architecture altogether. Uh, then, like, it must have been a mix of many reasons, but one of them was that I really wanted my independence and freedom. And I wanted to, like, to just go in a holiday if I want, whenever I want. So I, I always wanted to have a, a business. I didn't know what it's going to be. I mean, I was an educated architect, but I thought that would be very hard to do. Very, like I would, I, I thought that maybe I'll have to be like 50 or something when I will start an architecture business. Like that's, that's not going to work for me. Maybe you're not very satisfied um, in your work. Um, maybe you want a challenge. Maybe you just think it's interesting to have your own business or you can see the potential in having it. Or if you have a vision that you cannot really achieve at your current workplace. So the point of this video is to help those that want to take this step. Uh, to start their own uh, architecture practice, to help them navigate a little bit the process. I just want to say, like as a disclaimer, that this is not the way to do it or the perfect way. It might be that for you it will look differently, but I want to share my own experience and maybe that will help someone because I've learned some valuable lessons that I would have killed for three years ago. <laughs> I know how that feels. Uh, I've been there myself a few years ago and it was a very scary, frustrating, uncertain thing to do. I didn't felt I had anyone to ask. I kind of knew I cannot go to my competition and just ask them, how do you do it? Like, who would tell someone else, you know? only me here on on camera to everyone that listens um so yeah the thing is that um i do believe in sharing information and sharing uh whatever lessons you learned so like it will help someone and i just like it's like a desperate uh, try of helping my younger self that had so many questions and it felt like nobody knew the answers and I had to just go through it myself. <laughs> but yeah, as I said, it doesn't mean it is like uh, the way to do it. it. doesn't mean I've done it perfectly. Maybe I didn't. But it is an example, I think. And that will help to kind of understand a little bit more and know what to expect. Maybe learn something. You know, Elon Musk said about starting a business that it is like eating glass and staring into the abyss. And it really resonated with me. I really felt that deep down. That's how it was. And that's how it is still. There, there's no point to say that. If you want a very comfortable life right now, um, this is not the way to do it. Like you have to expect at least one or two or three or four years of hardship, uh, of hard work and uh, commitment to this because if you just want some fast results, they're not going to happen. No, you, you're going to have to be put to a test, to the test of time by your clients and you're going to have to pass it. You're going to have to be there for when they're ready, not for when you want it. So basically, I think most important was to have a first project. So if you get your first project, I don't care how you do it, maybe Maybe you do it for free or I've been paid for that first project and I was very grateful for that opportunity. I don't care how you get that project. <laughs> you should get your first project. 
with real clients. Uh, maybe, I don't know, it's an uncle or a friend or it's just someone random. I don't know. Just do one project and then the other challenge is the second project. <laughs> because uh, in my case it was like, oh, maybe the first one was a coincidence. So it was, I think, harder to, to get the second project uh, because I would have these doubts that uh, what, is, what if I didn't do a good job? Like, who would want to work with me? Yes, I've had a many doubts, of course, because you don't know. It's like, it's very hard. Like, nobody will uh, tell you that uh, actually you can relax, it will happen. You don't know. It could not happen. And I have been through some stressful periods myself that helped me see the 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 challenge and the difficulty in having a business uh, so I've gone through the valley of the abyss <laughs> eating glass and uh, crying and wanting to give up and just like have a normal job why not but when I was there in the valley I said I'm just I'm just gonna try my best and uh, basically made a website, I've been posting about the project, social media. So I've been, I've been doing my best in that valley. As a little background story, um, so I've started my practice in 2020, um, in January when uh, Corona was just getting started. And um, I had no savings. I've had quite basic language skills because I had to talk Norwegian. I had no home. I was actually living with in my friend's apartment uh, because I was supposed to move to Oslo. So I have established Tofan Arkitektur, which is based in Chomso, Norway, and it is formed of two people. And I've had a lot of interesting projects lately and things are generally good. It comes in waves, but it's definitely better than being uh, an employee. We've established already that it will be hard and you should expect that it is hard. But of course, we're not doing this just to be hard, you know. We, we can see the rewards. Uh, I think just like the freedom that you get from it, that you can choose when you can take holidays and how long and maybe you can take for a month if you don't want to work, if you have made enough money to survive for a month, then good for you, nobody will stop you, only yourself. Um, so it's the freedom and then it's like the that there is no limit over your income in a way. You can, like, when you are being an employee, you know, you're going to make this much every month. Maybe you get a raise a little bit more. But as a business owner, it's like it's fluctuating a lot. And, and sometimes it fluctuates there and sometimes it fluctuates there. And it is in a way, maybe in the first years, it's not so worth it. <laughs> but while the years pass, you can see that it's very worth it. And I would do it again. Like once you learn how to do this, I don't think you you will want to go back either. That you can make your own schedule and that you can uh, choose which projects to work on. You can have total control, free creative control. Lesson number one. Many people that want to start their own business, they, especially in architecture, they think that they're not ready. They don't know enough. Um, they need to learn more and that's not true. I mean, you're never gonna learn how to do it if you don't do it. Like you having uh, one responsibility in a company, which is probably, I don't know, drawing a con drawing concept or doing the tal project. It's not gonna teach you ever how to actually start your architecture practice because that's a totally different domain. <laughs> it's like, you're not, you're not gonna learn anything about it by working in an architecture firm. 
So you basically need to just jump right into the water and try to swim <laughs> while you do it. So you just need to be tolerant with the fact that you don't know many things and trust yourself that you're gonna find the answers and you're gonna ask someone, you're gonna collaborate with someone on this particular thing, you're gonna read about it, you're gonna pay someone to teach you something or you're gonna f- you need to be resourceful with your ways of finding the answers because that's for sure it's gonna happen you're not gonna you're not gonna have all the answers not at all you're not gonna have many answers except that pain of i am here in front of my clients and i want to look professional and i don't know some basic things are you willing to take that pain it's gonna be a little bit embarrassing i've had moments when i was like shit i should have known that oops but i've learned immediately you know and i think it's important to like keep your ego in check you need to be honest with what you don't know even if it's basic things you can say okay i know this and this but I don't know this and I promise I'm gonna find the answer and I'm gonna come back to you. Have that trust in yourself that you can do that and not get totally embarrassed and want to give up because you think that you cannot do it. Because it's it's so simple. Once you learn how to do that, it's just like that you learn it once and then you're an expert <laughs> in that thing, I'd say. So don't pretend to be an expert when you're not. Just be honest and admit that this is something you don't have the answer for. I cannot emphasize enough how important it is to exist on Google, have a website where you share projects, maybe have an ad, have social media. Don't put too much energy into logo, name, website even, like once you have it, it's really good. Like you can edit it afterwards. Uh, but you know, like when you start your business, really you, you are on a time schedule in a way. Like you kind of have to move fast. You need to prioritize very well what you're doing. Like prioritize your costs, prioritize your project, prioritize everything. Like, cause it's, it's either that or that, you know? Like in the beginning, you're not gonna have all the resources to do everything okay which program do i really 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 need to have right now it's not okay let me have all all the programs because you're just gonna go down like you need to stay on a uh, on a balance uh, between like what you get in and what you get out so costs and uh, income needs to be balanced from my own experience i have felt I felt it was necessary for me to talk Norwegian um, in order to create trust with uh, my clients. So I didn't feel very comfortable in talking Norwegian, but they really appreciate it. And I really appreciate it after a while because it it's like so specific terms that it was like much harder to like translate everything. If you want to start, I would recommend to have Uh, some savings Uh, let's say three months salary that's what they recommend I didn't have any savings Um, but don't do my way I thought that was quite stressful (laughs) and uh, maybe it would be nice to like keep a part-time job in the beginning even though I didn't have that one like for me it was so exhausting to go home from work and start doing something else like i think i've had that intention while i was working in in uh, in my previous workplace i've had that intention to like yeah i'm just gonna start it after work but i will just get exhausted out it was i couldn't i would go home and just sleep i didn't even want to like go see friends or like generally i would i would get so tired and i understand if that's also your case and um, what I like if you can't do both 
if you can't do it after work. Um, I think actually the best thing is to just like, fuck it, uh, just start it and not have too many plans. And uh, if, if you don't have a family or kids or like some big loans that you have, I would recommend that you just jump into it because you would be... I, I was surprised by how my brain works worked so differently when I actually put myself in the fire like normally I would be very comfortable and relaxed and yes maybe I will do it one day la 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 but it's not the same like if you're very determined to do it and you trust yourself that you're gonna find a way like you're gonna find a way to to keep it going and it's better to just cut the umbilical cord and just do your own thing because you'll have all the hours in a day to think about how to to get clients and how to make a brand for yourself and work on projects and have that time to to really to to actually do it and if you really hate your job like for real i think you have nothing to lose just go for your dreams like i promise you it would be you would be okay for me it wasn't really like i i didn't have much to lose like if things didn't work worst case scenario like you need to think about worst case scenarios worst case scenario is just like go back to another job and that's fine yeah you just find another job i mean if you don't have too many obligations i think it's harder when you have obligations and loans and family and kids and cars and stuff and that's why i didn't want to take any loan in the beginning i really was very careful with uh uh, with my freedom basically like I just want to like if things don't work out I don't want to like go in a hospital stressing because I cannot pay my loan or whatever you know I would just okay fine can't pay my rent <laughs> I will probably go home you know to my parents or something that's fine so basically I want to close with this question is it worth it to start your own architecture firm Definitely. I won't go back to being an employee. I love my <laughs> I love my work now. Like I find a lot of joy every day and I am excited even if I work with detail project or concept or competitions. I am I I, I don't feel like I work actually. Like I feel like I I feel happy. I think and just that freedom that I can, whenever I want, just um, take a break. Um, I have this plan to film more of uh, my experience and um, talk more into detail about uh, the de- like the specific things about how to start an architecture firm. For example how do you start where do you like register how to get an insurance for mistakes how to make offers how to basically market yourself and so on i will i'm planning to do one video per week we'll see how that goes hopefully i will manage that so let me know if you have any questions in the comments or yes and thank you for your time see you next time